Thank you for downloading this podcast. My name is Richard Rucroft. You're listening to Gnostic Lectures. Today is lecture number 23, The Ray of Death. Sounds very mysterious, doesn't it? My host today, Mr. E. Jim G. Ross. Well, Jim, what is this all about? Hi, Rick. Thank you again for being here, for allowing me to be here. Well, you know, the Ray of Death, lecture number 23. Kabbalistically, if we add 2 plus 3 makes 5. 5 represents law, cosmic law. You know, it is a law. It is a cosmic law in the universe. But you know, this law is a law of nature. It's not a law from the absolute. It's not a spiritual law. It's a physical law. But there is a connection with those uh, superior laws coming from the absolute. Am I, can I ask you a question before we get really started? Of course. The ray of death, there's seven spirits before the throne. We did a lecture on that. So this would this be uh, in the lines of this number seven, the seventh one? That's correct. Okay. That's correct. Yeah, so essentially, you know, um, death is a very interesting matter because uh, we spoke about the absolute before and it's interesting to never ignore the absolute because the absolute is the reality of all realities is the inner reality of all realities, where death doesn't exist. In the absolute, there is no birth, there is no death. So it means the spirit has no beginning, has no end. And this is something that we will never be able to understand if we use our inferior mind, what we call thinking. Thinking is just a mechanical process that has a beginning and has an end. So what we call thinking is the struggle of the antithesis, a thesis against an antithesis to find the synthesis. But in reality, in the absolute, there is no beginning, there is no end. There is life, and this is the real essence of life, because life descended from the absolute, a life that has no beginning and has no end, and means the spirit has always been, will always be. So the spirit descended into matter, into the universe, and impregnate, impregnated matter to create life. So the fire, the light transformed into fire, entered into the water, and here we are. You know, the water transforms into ice, and now also transform into steam. And here we have different elements of nature as part of the combination of both. So essentially, the ray of death, as you said, it, is the seventh ray. The universe has been organized in seven, you know, the law of seven is the law of organization. And there are seven rays descending from the absolute to organize the universe. As we said that before, the first ray is creation. The universe has been created. The absolute has never been created. It has always been, will always be. Now, the second ray is the ray of medicine. The third ray the ray of art and love, the fourth ray, the ray of justice, the fifth ray, the ray of strength, the sixth ray, politics and economics, and the seventh ray is the ray of death. So where do we experience death? Here in the universe, within the universe, within nature. It's one of the laws of nature. This is why we experience physical death, you know, when a planet dies and becomes a moon, you know, death has happened. It means there is no life anymore, no physical life, but there are other kinds of life. Now, same thing happened with all the species, you know, all the species have a beginning and have an end. So death is the end of the process of life within the universe, within nature. So, but in reality, we have to also comprehend something very important, that when the spirit descended from the absolute and incarnated within matter, why is said that there is so much darkness? You know, the spirit is light, but there is so much darkness in the universe. Why? Because there is no enough light. This is why. The light is being projected through the suns, through the stars, but the planets themselves are illuminated by the suns and the stars, unless a planet has the power to transform into a sun. And this is what 
happen. You know, all suns, all stars were created within themselves. It means they defeated, listen to this carefully, they defeated, those planets defeated death. They didn't become a moon. They became what? They became a sun. They became a star. We've been told in Nordic anthropology that the planet Venus is transforming into a sun. Why? Why is that? Because the humanity that lives in planet Venus is an angelical humanity. It means these people who live there and all the species are solar people. They transform themselves from lunar species into solar species. And of course, the humanity of Venus is the one that is projecting the light and reinforcing the light of the planet itself into the solar system. And this is why Venus, when, when Venus, we see Venus in the morning, the, we call it the star, the morning star. You know, and it is a planet. It's not the star. But apparently it's transforming into a star. What about the moons? The Earth has one moon, or maybe two moons, that is a small moon, next to our white moon called Lilith. The white moon and the black moon, uh, the astronomers call the black moon Lilith. It's an asteroid. It's a gigantic asteroid next to the white moon. It's a, it's a big asteroid, but it used to be a moon, and it's been diminishing its size because it's a dead it's a cadaver, it's a dead former planet. Now, the white moon is also a dead planet, so it experienced death. But there are other planets that did the opposite. You know, they incarnated the light because their humanities reached this level of perfection with imperfection, and we all have the potential to get there. And our planet Earth, as we said it before, unfortunately, is doing the opposite. We are all walking to death, physical death, by having entered into a, a cosmic law called the law of evolution or the law of degeneration. So we are, we are influencing our own planet Earth. The planet Earth is also dying. It's very ill right now. And this is why the planet is fighting its death through global catastrophes. The planet doesn't want to die. And because of that, you know, we see earthquakes, volcanic eruptions, tsunamis. But we have transferred our own death, our own illnesses, into our own planet. So this is why we are far away in becoming a sun, in transforming planet Earth into a small star. So coming back into this, every planet has a beginning and has an end. Now, regarding our own human organisms... We had a beginning when we were procreated by our physical parents and the angels of life, the angels of creation, are the ones who made the connection between the spermatozoa and the ovule of our physical parents. But now, at the end of our life, the angels of death, which is the seventh ray, the seventh ray, the ray of death of the archangel Orifiel from the planet Saturn, they are the ones who are here, who came here to disconnect the human machine, the human organism from the, our soul. And this is the process of physical death that we all know very well because we experience that every day. Every day there are many, many funerals everywhere. Every day we experience the death of a friend, the death of a relative, and of course, we, we suffer because we are going to miss those individuals who are gone. But now, let's try to immerse within the real meaning of death. We say death is connected with nature, and we ignore that nature is alive. It's a manifestation of the divinity. It's the feminine aspect of God, the divinity. God, again, is coming from Latin Deus. Deus means dos in Spanish, means two in English. So spirit and matter are God. A spirit is light that descended from the absolute and transformed into fire. And the fire lives inside water, which is the feminine aspect of nature. And suddenly here we are. And you see, when we die, our fire will be gone. So matter will decompose. 
and we become a cadaver. So this is the process of physical death. Now, the angels of death are the ones who cause the physical death. Why? Why? Because this is our level of being. This is our level of being. It means that we have chosen our, our own spiritual being, our own spirit, you know, decided to experience the physical death because it's a process of learning. You know, life is a journey. Life is a school of learning. The spirit descended from the absolute, created the universe, created the spirit and life, or crystallized the light into fire and crystallized also into water. So at the end of the times, as we said it before, we are going to return to the absolute as pure light again. But when we are successful, when we have learned many, many lessons, we have applied those lessons to ascend into higher degrees of consciousness, of awareness of the cosmic laws. We have become wiser. We have rich wisdom, which is, you know, a quality of the spirit, a manifestation of God, and our capability of loving, incarnating love, and incarnating cosmic consciousness, cosmic awareness, then we return to the absolute. But when we have learned the lessons, we won't come back the way we left. Normally, we left as a tiny little spark that lived within our own heart. If we return the same spark, after millions of years that we have been, you know, traveling within our own galaxy, then if we return the same way, we'll be a failure. But if we return, transform into a higher degree of consciousness, higher degree of light, more and more light, of course, will be a success. We spoke before about masterhood. So this is the purpose of life, to reach masterhood, to reach masterhood, no matter what, because otherwise life has no purpose. If we are here just to stay for millions of years, the same way that we left from the absolute, and we come back to the absolute, you know, the same way we left, of course, we are a failure. We are a spiritual failure. Now, allow me to say that there are three kinds of death. You know, physical death is what we know. But what do we know about the other two kinds of death? We only know about physical death because it's part of nature. But also, allow me to say that Mother Nature has the feminine aspect of God. She is the creator of life. She is the one who procreated life within the womb of nature, within the womb of the universe, because the galaxy is a gigantic living organism. Every planet is a gigantic living organism, part of a more gigantic organism, cosmic organism. So Mother Nature is the one who gives us life here, and after she is also death itself, to teach us a lesson. Because if we are corrupt, if we are unconscious, if we make mistake after mistake because we are in ignorance about the cosmic laws of the universe, if we don't contribute to multiply life, to increase cosmic intelligence, to conquer the light, to develop more and more light, there is no reason to stay around creating more and more darkness. This is why death is a very important element to be considered created by Mother Nature. So we can say the Mother of the Universe, Divine Mother Nature, the Wife of the Holy Spirit, God's manifestation from a feminine aspect, she is the creator and she's also the creator of life. She's also Mother Death, Divine Mother Death. So let's try to now to enter into the two other aspects of death. There are three kinds of death. The other two aspects are, have you heard about the second death? Have you heard about that? The second death is explained in the Bible that people experience in inferno, hell. In Gnostic anthropology, we call it the infradimensions of nature, and also we call them the submerged, the immersed mineral kingdom, 
the immersed mineral kingdom. So that means that inferno is the same infrared of nature, and what we call heaven, the opposite of inferno, is the ultraviolet. And the ultraviolet and the infrared are connected with the entire solar system. You know, we could say our solar system is a gigantic living organism also, and our sun corresponds to the heart, to our own heart, corresponds to our own sun here in our solar system. So we irradiate all those energies moving from the sun into the planets and reversed from the planets into the sun. The same way our blood circulates within our organism, we are a perfect replica of our solar system. Either we agree with it or we don't. The Bible describes that we are all made on the image of the divinity. And the divinity is everywhere. It is the outside and the inside. And also in esoteric language, we say what's above is below, what below is above. What within is outside, what's outside is within. So this is an esoteric axioma. It's a cosmic law and a spiritual cosmic law to interpret, to understand the laws of the universe. We are all connected. So that means that we all have the potential to ascend into higher levels of perfection. There are superior beings that rule the entire galaxy, and they have the power to immerse within every planet of the galaxy and to understand the purpose of every individual that lives within the galaxy, which are trillions and trillions of individuals. There are millions of planets within every galaxy. So those superior beings are all children of the divinity. We could say they are our elder brothers, sisters that have incarnated more and more aspects of the divinity. Of course, there is a cosmic common father-mother, because God is higher than sexuality. So we should never say God is a man. No, God is higher than that, much higher than a man and a woman, that incorporates both elements, masculine and feminine, because there is no way we can procreate life without a male and a female. So this is extremely important to be comprehended, to be understood. So in reality, the process of life and the process of death is important to be comprehended because the essence of life descended from the absolute. When scientists say, oh, you know, the Big Bang theory, the Big Bang explosion that generated the universe, with all respect, ladies and gentlemen, with all respect, scientists of the world, come on, you know, don't play games with words. It sounds intelligent, but it is not. Life descended from life, dear listeners. Life descended from the absolute, where life has always been, will always be. And life descended into the galaxies with a purpose, to transform who we were into higher levels, to ascend within our level of being. That was the purpose of life. So when we return to the Absolute, to make the Absolute, which is already perfect, to reach perfection within perfection. Something we cannot understand with our little brains, but it's something that we should meditate about it. This is why life has a purpose, which is to ascend. When we descend, we also learn, but also sometimes a descension means failure. So it's better to ascend than to descend. But if we also descend to ascend higher, that's also good. It's also important. Because sometimes we need to descend to learn the lessons of descension, and then we can incorporate those elements to become wiser, and then we can ascend higher than before. Yes, it is. It is more than possible. It's actually a need. We need to do that if we really want to justify our presence here within the universe. So life and death. So the second death, what's the purpose of second death developed by Mother Nature? It's the death of the ego. The ego is the inferior nature. The ego is animal psychology, lower psychology, 
the psychology that belongs to lower levels within the three kingdoms of nature. The ego is animal psychology, but it's also satanic psychology, perversities. So when the ego is not destroyed, we create a humanity like ours, where the ego becomes something normal. When everybody believes that we are normal if we are, you know, the way we are. It means wars are okay, killing is okay, hunger is okay, poverty is okay, suffering is okay. We say it has always been, it will always be, which is not true. It is not true. Because the beginning was paradise on earth. The superior being that are our real ancestors, they created paradise on earth because they had no ego. And this is the purpose of life. If we created ego, that was a dissension. We descended to learn the lessons of nature. But now, if we don't ascend, with all respect, ladies and gentlemen, we haven't learned anything. We descended to learn to ascend higher than before, or to recuperate the level where we used to be. Our real ancestors were angelical beings, superior beings, not the K people, as we said it before. The K people was a species in extinction that doesn't exist anymore. But this is the future of humanity if we don't ascend again. If we continue degenerating the way we are, because we enter into a stage of deep degeneration, not only physical, but psychological, of course, we will continue bringing more and more K people into the earth. If people have animals, have people physically, like the man of Cro-Magnon, the man of Nardental, but they are not our real ancestors. Again, if we have descended, we have to learn to ascend again. So, Mother Nature will destroy the ego downstairs in Inferno, the infra-dimensions of nature. And after that, after thousands of years, we'll be able to ascend again, purified, without the ego. You see the point? This is the purpose of the second death. So, Inferno has been created by Mother Nature. This is why Mother Nature, the wife of the Holy Spirit, she created Inferno. It's like a jail. It's like a prison. Nobody can escape from inferno. I'm telling you, nobody. Those who believe that they can control nature, they are wrong. Nature controls us. And we will never be able to believe that we are higher than nature. Now, what nature is doing with us is teaching us to ascend from a lower level of life into higher levels then we can learn to spiritualize nature, to spiritualize matter. And that way we can really join to become one with the spirit, to spiritualize matter. And this is alchemy, transforming lead into gold. So when we don't destroy the ego here, listen to this. When the ego is not annihilated consciously by ourselves, Mother Nature will do the work at the end of a cycle, and today we are experiencing the end of a cycle. You know, we explained that before in the lecture, The Fallen Tower, when we, when we spoke about, you know, the law of return, the law of reincarnation. Remember that. Well, when we are not masters, when we haven't reached masterhood, we are immersed within the law of eternal return. So we return in every cycle 108 times. And today, listen to this, please, carefully. Today, most of humanity is experiencing life 108. 108 means 9, if we add the numbers. 9, you know, is connected with sex. The ninth is fear. Teaching us that is a superior sex, that is an inferior sex. Six is reversed to nine, which is the meaning is the lovers. Nine is the nine sphere connected with the nine heavens. Nine heavens. So to ascend into heaven, we have to annihilate the ego. And the ego is connected with number six. We have to reverse number six and to transform it into number nine. But this is an esoteric language. 
we are speaking now, we are speaking in a Kabbalistic language, an alchemist language, and we will be able to explain it later. So, don't forget, the second death explained in the Bible means what we are trying to say right now. Second death. Now, and this is the end of a cycle, Handy and Nate life. But how many cycles do we have? Only one cycle? No, we do have 3,000 cycles since we descended from the Absolute until we return to the Absolute. There are 3,000 cycles multiplied by 108. What is that? 300,000 plus possibilities of ascending into a masterhood level walking the vertical line, and we are being given so many chances by the divinity to ascend into a level of perfection within perfection, and there, are, there is no known limits, as we said that before, because there are superior beings that can rule a galaxy, not only ruling a planet. There are superior beings that rule a planet, but there are many others that rule galaxies, complete galaxies with the power to understand the psychology of every individual that lives within the galaxy. And one of them, listen to this carefully, is who we call Jesus Christ, Joshua ben Pandira, who reincarnated in the Middle East and incarnated the Christ. The Christ is the perfect son of creation, the perfect son of the cosmic common father, mother. The perfect son, after he did that, Joshua ben Pandira, he incarnated the father that lives in the absolute. Listen to my words, please. It means Joshua ben Pandira, or Jesus Christ, he lives in the absolute and simultaneously here, in our solar system. But also he lives within the entire galaxy and many other galaxies. That's his level of being something that our limited capability to perceive reality now because of our own ego won't be able to understand clearly. This is why I'm trying to explain with my own limitations what is really hard to comprehend. But in a few words, he incarnated the light within the light. He incarnated the perfect sun of creation, which is resurrection resurrecting physically. He defeated physical death. Listen to my words. He defeated physical death. He resurrected physically. And after he did that, he ascended into a much higher level of perfection, within perfection, which is being able to enter into the absolute before the end of the times. Do you know what that means? He's a habitant of the absolute and he's a habitant of many galaxies, including our Milky Way, for our own understanding. So now death, this is why the importance of death, physical death to prevent the growth and development of more and more darkness, psychological darkness in our planet and in every other planet of the galaxy. There must be a limit for physical life, otherwise if there is evil developing, negativity, destructive, you know, actions, of course, that planet will die before its time. If we have a nuclear holocaust in a planet, for example, will be the end of the planet and the end of the humanity before its time. So it's good that physical death has a reality to prevent crazy situations that could happen in any planet of the universe. Now, the second death has to do with preventing that in a new return, we come back worse than before. But you know, Mother Nature is so loving because she is Mother Love, she is Mother Creation, she is Mother Love, and she is also Mother Death. She is giving us so much time, handy and eight lifetimes. And today, this is why, you know, with all respect, if people believe that we all go to heaven after we die, allow me to say it, it's not true. It is not true. If we have ego, there is no way we can go to heaven. 
some people who have eliminated a, a big percentage of their ego could have a holiday in heaven. But you cannot become an angel unless you have annihilated your ego in a bigger percentage, which are the same seven deadly sins, the same Satan of all religions, which are lust, arrogance, envy, anger, greed, laziness, and gluttony. The seven deadly sins. We have to transform them into the seven virtues of the Spirit, which is the opposite. So, this is why Mother Nature, at the end of a cycle, now, when people die now, they won't be able to come back. And they will have to stay on the other side, pu being purified. An inferno can be described as, if we have made people suffer in 108 lives, every tear that we produced, every tear, we will have to experience the same tears, the same pain that we caused to other people. For example, they say Adolf Hitler, because of him, millions of people cried so many tears. Millions of people died in the most horrible manners, not only destroyed by the bombs, by the bombing, by the World War II, but also, you know, people who were tortured, people who were annihilated, people who were killed in concentration camps. All those individuals who suffered so much Adolf Hitler is experiencing the pain of each one of them. The purpose of the divinity is to help Adolf Hitler, the soul of Adolf Hitler, to be purified again. And he could come back to earth without ego, a purified soul. You see, it's not only Adolf Hitler, it's only a name. There are many others, many others who committed so many atrocities, who also contributed to the World War II and the World War I. Hitler was only one of them. So this is very, very important to be comprehended. Now, so the second death has that purpose. So inferno is horrible. We all have mistakes. We all make mistakes. We all develop vices, errors. We committed errors. We committed atrocities in past lives. Well, everything has to be paid because that is an economy of nature. The ego is accounts payable and the virtues of the spirit is account receivable. When we have done good things, Mother Nature will compensate us. If we haven't done it, Mother Nature will collect from us. And this is now time to collect. People who are coming back now, people who are coming back into this lifetime, they have to understand that life is not a game. Life is something very serious. Being happy doesn't mean that we are laughing 24 hours a day. It means that there is peace in our heart. There is joy in our heart because we have filled, we can feel that we have fulfilled the purpose of life, which is awakening our soul, recreating our lives and ascending into higher levels of consciousness, learning to walk the vertical line. So physical death, second death. What about the death number three? Mystical death, what is that? Mystical death is learning to die in our ego here, here. Don't wait until we die. Here. Learning, you know, in the lecture of meditation, about meditation, we explain that. We are here to learn to annihilate our demons within, that we created in different past lives. And the time has come now to annihilate those demons that we created ourselves. We are responsible for the seven deadly sins. That Jesus Christ came to teach us to annihilate. Moses came to teach us through the Ten Commandments. But they are never heard. People don't listen to their instructions. Superior beings, divine masters. Buddha came to teach the same principles. Krishna, Mohammed, they all came to teach us. But we never listened to them. We ignored them. Sometimes we make even fun of them. We betray them when we pretend to be saints. And we are not. You see, this is extremely important. So, physical death, second death. Now, mystical death means learning to annihilate the ego here and now. Every day, dear listeners, every day we should practice the annihilation of the ego consciously. This is what is called mystical death. Mystical death. Don't forget that. Consciously. 
developing our creative willpower because we need the energies to annihilate the ego. But when we develop and reinforce the seven deadly sins, we don't have the energy to kill the ego. Do you know, when we practice sex based on lust, an irresponsible sexual activity, do you know how much energy we waste? How can we annihilate the ego if we don't have the energy to kill our own demons? When we explode with anger, do you know how much energy we have ex expended? You know, you know you can have a heart attack when you are angry? You can also kill other people when you are angry? Do you know how much energy you are eliminating at that moment? How are you going to have the energies to destroy your demons? And you are wasting the energy of the Holy Spirit within yourself. We share the power, the Holy Spirit and the Divine Mother of the Universe. They are the ones who destroy the ego. And I, they and I lay the ego together. Our fire within will burn those demons. When we are envy, when we are arrogant, when we feel better than anybody else, do you know how much energy we're wasting? How can we annihilate the ego? We are reinforcing the ego. Do you know when we are greedy, when we don't care about people suffering, we only care about making more and more and more and more. If we have to kill to make more, like the business of war, do you know what we are doing? We are becoming monsters. Monsters. There is no way we are going to eliminate any ego because if we don't repent, if we don't correct ourselves, there is no way we are going to annihilate the ego. So we can never practice the mystical death if we don't have the energy. When we are lazy, when we fall into gluttony, when we eat too much or when we drink too much and we cook our livers, of course we don't have the energy to annihilate the ego. So we have to learn to practice alchemy, learning to transform our weaknesses into strength to transform our lead into gold. That will give us the energy to annihilate those demons that we created ourselves in many lifetimes. That many priests and pastors and reverends teach that this is the only life. With all respect, ladies and gentlemen, we disagree with them. Because if we had only one lifetime, it would be very unfair from Mother Nature from the divinity, from the Holy Spirit, from the cosmic common father, cosmic common mother. You know, those children that were born to die of a starvation in a few days, in a few weeks, if they had only one chance, it would be very unfair. Those souls have been here already many times. Maybe this is their last life before their soul will go downstairs into the infra dimensions of nature to annihilate their ego because unfortunately they develop so much ego that now they have to descend and Mother Nature will destroy that ego and after a thousand, two thousand years we should be able to come back with a new physical appearance we should be able to come back as part of the humanity again but Mother Nature is recycling us the same way Mother Nature is recycling now that the planet Earth is being recycled through earthquakes, tsunamis, volcanic eruptions, hurricanes, etc., etc. Because if the planet Earth doesn't do it, we'll die. Same thing with us. If we don't recycle ourselves, we will end dying physically and Mother Nature will have to help us on the other side. But with intense pain, horrible suffering, dear Ladies, ladies and gentlemen, allow me to say all of this. Now, mystical death means exactly the opposite. Learn to die in the ego here on earth. So the second death is downstairs after we die. What is the first death? Should it be physical death or mystical death? Allow me to say the first death. Listen to this. Try not to forget. Try to remember my words with all respect. The first death should be mystical death because this is the highest purpose of life, learning to die in the ego here and now. And if we fail here, Mother Nature will destroy the ego downstairs. But this is our first concern. We are here to eliminate the ego past lives. 
that we created through so many errors, the accumulation of many defects, vices, all kinds of atrocities that we have committed in past lives. If we were in a war in past lives, how many people did we kill? How many civilians did we kill? How many atrocities we have committed before? You see the point. And now we, we believe that because we have a new body, we can ignore our mistakes from the past. Why is it that there are children who are only 10 years of age and they are already so perverse? Because they brought back the ego from past lives. Remember my words. Let's have a dialogue from soul to soul. So, first, death is mystical death. We are here to ascend. And the only way to ascend is to transform lead into gold. Gold is creating a soul consciousness. Lead is having the ego, the animal psychology, the Satan of all religions, the seven deadly sins. And the death number three is physical death. You see, we are so reversed in our lifestyles that we believe physical death is number one. It shouldn't be. Because if we are really annihilating the ego consciously, Mother Nature, the Divine Mother Nature, Divine Mother Love, and the Divine Mother Death, she will give us more time, an extension of our life, to help us to annihilate the ego here because this is the highest purpose of life. Don't forget my words, please. Let's try to remember. Now, what happens when we die? What happens after we die? Isn't it interesting to continue talking about the topic? You know that our destiny is already written. The laws of destiny have a book of life for each one of us. Angelical beings control that. So, based on our past lives, in our book of life is written our, the, our mistakes and also our qualities. What we have learned from life and to become more productive, to become more intelligent, more conscious, to become wiser, more loving. So, our destiny in this lifetime is already written. But can we change our destiny? Of course, of course. Because... If we, if we have to pay for a mistake from past lives, if we do good deeds, we also will be paying with the law of sacrifice, helping everybody who is in a worse situation than ours. Good deeds. You know, may, maybe you don't have money to help people, but you can go to a hospital to give hope to a person that you don't even know. Doing volunteer work, helping those who are suffering more than we are. Those good deeds will help us to pay the karma from past lives and we will reduce our accounts payable with the divinity. So when we die, listen to this, when we die, an angel of death connected with the planet Saturn is the one who will disconnect our physical body from our soul. And this is called, is called the silver cord or the silver thread. You see, and this is the connection that we all have from the physical body to our soul. But in reality, before touching our soul, is connected with our astral body. Do you know what's the astral body? It's a body made of molecules. We explained that before in the seven bodies. The astral body is the body that becomes very active while we are sleeping. This is the body that, because it's made of molecular particles can fly because it's very light and we can fly with it. In our dreams, have you seen yourself flying? So when we die, the physical body will die, but also another body called the aesthetic body or the vital body called the bioplastic body by European scientists will also die, will disappear, will dissipate. So the physical body will die the aesthetic body, vital or bioplastic, will die, but we continue alive on the other side with the molecular body. The molecular body is made of, as I said, is called the astral body, made of particles which are lighter than the cells. So, and this is the, we can say, is a parallel universe, the astral universe connected with the astral Earth. Remember that when we spoke about history of the Earth, we described there was a molecular earth 
where, well, we all live there 24 hours a day, but we are not aware of it because we are sleeping 24 hours a day. We are not awakening our consciousness to perceive that we are living simultaneously in a physical, cellular world and also in a molecular world and also in an atomic world, which is the mental world, and also an etheric world. We don't realize it because we are sleeping. Our ego is blocking our capability to perceive reality the way it is. We perceive only a twisted reality. So when we die, we continue a life on the other side. This is why physical death is important, but it's not the most important death, because we will continue a life on the other side. Based on the infinite reality of our spiritual being, the spiritual being will never die, it was never born, it has always been, will always be. So the energy to all our bodies is being given by God within. We are all a little piece of God. We are all children of the divinity. We are part of God. Either we agree with that or we don't. So when we die, the angel of death will cut it. And many people have had the experience of seeing the angel of death. The angel of death, you know, is carrying an instrument to cut our silver cord. And sometimes the angel of death crystallizes before our eyes. Sometimes we can see it. Some people don't see anything, but everybody feels their time is near because the angel of death is announcing his presence in different manners. Sometimes telepathically, we feel that death is coming soon, or some people more sensitive can see the angels of death. And also, they wear a tunic that represents a human skeleton. Ridiculous, absurd, non-believable. Well, with all respect, this is the way it is. Because those superior beings are more real than you and me, who is listening right now. They are higher beings, superior beings. And these people used to be like us, but they ascended into a higher level of consciousness, of awareness. They are much wise than we are, and they act in accordance with cosmic law. So they use their wisdom, listening also to the White Lodge that rules the universe, because the White Lodge is the concentration of all angelical beings from God towards us. There is also a Black Lodge, which is the concentration of the ego in the universe. And there are also hierarchies within the Black Lodge. Individuals sometimes have a lot of power, and they are convinced sometimes that they are the good guys. But unfortunately for them, they are not. And they will be punished also the way we are all punished. But we are not punished by the divinity. We are punished by ourselves because... If we have no respect for cosmic law, cosmic law will be acting against us. Let me give you a very simple example, maybe too simple. I'm driving and there is a, a green light and suddenly I speed up to catch the green light and now there is a red light. I don't care. I cross with red light and I hit and there is a multiple collision. I hit people. I kill people and I ended in a hospital and in a wheelchair. And he said, oh yeah, these other guys were stupid, you know. I blame anybody except myself. Who punished me? Other people? They should have allowed me to pass with red light or I'm punishing myself. That's exactly what I've done. You know, ego, with all respect, ego is chronic stupidity. This is what it is. And if we like to live by the ego and not by the soul consciousness, by the laws of the divinity, then don't cry after because it's our responsibility to learn to be responsible, to be conscious, to have respect and self-respect for everything. Now, so the angel of death will perform his or her duty, these superior beings. There is a movie, actually, maybe some of you have seen that movie. I don't recall the title. Brad Pitt, the famous Hollywood star, and Anthony Hopkins, a famous British actor. They were working together. Anthony Hopkins is going to die, and Brad Pitt represents the angel of death. 
If you haven't seen that movie, I recommend that you see it. It's a very interesting movie. And Anthony Hopkins makes a deal with the angel of death to extend, to extend the time of death. Not to, you see, not to take him away from physical life yet. And it happens, you know, the angel of death waits for a, a longer period of time before Anthony Hopkins is taken to the other side. It's a beautiful movie with a great message, a very interesting plot. So, when we die, let's say we are very corrupt individuals, we're very evil individuals, and we don't regret. We become very proud of our mistakes, of our evil, you know, of our perversions. What happens is the spirit that lives in our heart will leave. God is not within ourselves anymore. You know, the Bible calls them the empty vessels. It means that it's a human machine ruled by the ego. That's a perfect demon. There is no God inside anymore. This is the kind of people who kill and enjoy killing. The kind of people who torture and enjoy torturing people. The kind of people who burn an entire city and drop atomic bombs with joy. You see, enjoy being evil. God is not there anymore. The divinity is allowing that individual to be around for only one purpose, to collect the karma of all of us, which is also doing cosmic justice. Because we have made mistakes, we have committed mistakes, and of course the divinity has to collect what we owe to balance the universe again. Otherwise the universe will become a chaos. Planets will hit each other, and then it won't be a universe anymore. Everything will collapse. So the balance has to be reinstated permanently, constantly. Now, that evil individual, when the evil individual dies, do you know what happens? God, the Holy Spirit, won't be, won't be going with that demon into inferno. Do you know who is going to be guiding that evil entity because he's not a soul anymore? It is a soul. There is a soul, but the soul is already eaten by those demons that constitute the ego. It's like the soul is trapped, trapped within those demons. Do you know who is guiding into inferno that soul contaminated? The Divine Mother Nature, the Divine Mother Love, who is also the Divine Mother Death. She will take that evil, you know, individual into inferno, and after a long, long period of time, that soul will be purified again. Sometimes, you know, some fallen angels, fallen angel, can you imagine a fallen angel, can stay there for a million years. But you know the planet Earth and the universe, a million years means nothing. In inferno. And they don't repent. But after so long, after suffering so much, they begin to understand because they've been totally reversed. They've been reversing themselves. They have convinced themselves that Good is evil and evil is good. Completely twisted. Justifying themselves. The chief of the Black Lodge, I'm not going to say its name, but he's already in prison. The Bible speaks about that Satan will be in prison in Inferno for a thousand years. Maybe more than a thousand years because time is relative. But I'm telling you, it's already imprisoned. So those demons have, that have been ruling this planet for the last thousands of years, have lost a lot of power. Our planet Earth had been brought back slowly, slowly, slowly into a more, we could say, positive angle connected with the light. So the planet is not lost 100% the way it used to be. Remember my words. So after we die and we are being taken to the other side, there is also a judgment. The Divine Mother, before she takes us to Inferno, will be taken to a judgment, to a tribunal where the laws of karma will be testing us and telling us where is their judgment, because there is a judgment. The judgment may consist that we are going to be given another body or we won't be given another body because people have done beautiful things that allow them to be in heaven in the holidays. They, they cannot stay in heaven because they haven't reached the angelical stage. But there are good souls that have, you know, 
the right to ascend into heaven and there to talk to angels face to face and to experience the joy of being there. But others, I'm telling you with all respect, an immense majority will go to inferno because the ego accumulated in handy and eight lives is too much and that ego has to be annihilated. Otherwise, a new body will bring back more evil than before. So, please remember my words. Thank you for listening. It looks like the Christians had uh, sort of most of this right because the Christians say, if you're good, you go to heaven. If you're bad, you go to hell. And uh, that is, of course, from their point of view, they, they only look at it as we have one life. And the Gnostic view is much broader than that, isn't it? Yeah, it, it is. Actually, all religions speak about heaven and inferno, all religions. Yes. Because uh, the supra dimensions or infra dimensions, heaven and inferno, is part of nature, the loss of nature, because if inferno didn't exist, you know, it would be no limit for evil. And there is a limit for evil. You know, there are planets in the galaxy that Gnostic cosmology teaches us there are planets that exploded because the habitants became so evil they created a nuclear holocaust that was so huge they even created not only an atomic uh, weapon or many weapons atomic but also the bomb of neutrons or the bomb of electrons if you create a bomb of electrons you destroy the entire planet and affect the entire solar system. You see, and that has happened within the galaxy. I've just heard some rumors, actually, where one government in the world, I won't mention which one, has developed weapons that are much more dangerous and much more catastrophic than nuclear uh, bombs. So. Yeah, well, the, you know, the people have spoken about the new... Uh, neutron bomb. Neutron bomb, yeah. you know, they will destroy, they will kill everybody... Uh, even the cockroaches will survive, but they will destroy everything else. Yeah. Because apparently the cockroaches are, are molecular. They are not even, you know, cellular. Mm. So they will destroy all cells, all so the, cell, the cellular universe. But you know, this is the point. You know, it is possible. It could happen. But also, the situation in now, the Black Lodge has lost. It's a tremendous power. Mm -hmm because the Black Lodge has infiltrated governments and every institution on earth. But now they are not there anymore. They have lost their power. So the divinity is, because the divinity is not a dictatorship. God is not a dictatorship. God allows us to learn and learn and learn. But again, there is a limit for evil. And we have touched the limit already. Yeah. Well, Jim, thank you for another very interesting lecture. My name's Richard Rootcroft. My host today, Mr. E. Jim G. Ross. The lecture was lecture number 23, The Ray of Death. Thank you, Jim. Thank you very much, Rick. And thank you for listening. Thank you for your patience. Thank you to our listeners. And allow me to apologize if I offended anybody. It wasn't my intention. My duty is to share whatever I have learned, you know, uh, because it is my duty. That's the way I pay my own deed, for my own bad deeds. And also that's my way of paying my own karma. Thank you very much for listening. Thank you. And the website is rickyradio.com. We'll catch you next time. Bye-bye.